Amen. Once again, amen, thank you for joining us for our Sunday morning service, uh, Passion for Christ Covenant Ministries. We bless each and every one of you. We thank God for you. We thank God for your, your life. Amen. We thank God for you uh, as a member and as a friend. We bless God for each and every one of you. As we get started this morning in the Word of God, we're going to be in Romans chapter 1, verse 6. Amen. Romans chapter 1, verse 6. As we turn in our Bibles, uh, we want to look and see what the Word of God says. All right. That shit is 1 and 16. I didn't write it down right. That's okay. Let me get it right. It's actually verse 1, Romans chapter 1, verse 16. Paul says to the church of Rome, and let me start at verse 15. He says, so as much as in me, as much as is in me, I am ready I'm ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. I'm ready. Paul said, I'm ready. I got what it takes to get the job done, and I'm ready to get it done. I'm ready to preach. I'm ready to preach. Somebody say, preach, Bishop. I'm ready to preach. Amen. That's what we're going to do. Amen. So I'm ready to preach the gospel to the people that are at Rome also. All right. Okay, let me go back there. Oh, there you go. So, <clears throat> verse 16 says, For I am not, I am not ashamed of the gospel. I am not ashamed of this good news about Christ. Why? Because it is the power of God at work. It is the power of God. The gospel is the power of God at work. Saving everyone who believes, the Jew first and also the Gentile. The Jew first and also the Gentile. The gospel is for everybody. I remember that. The gospel is for everybody. It came to the Jews first, but it also was for the Gentiles. Before the Gentiles were excluded, which includes us, they were excluded. They were on the outside of the promise. But now we've been included. We've been drafted in. I'm so glad about it. It says, this good news tells us how God makes us right in his sight. God is the one that does it. He makes us right in his sight. This is accomplished from start to finish by faith. Say that one more time, Bishop. It says, this is accomplished from start to finish by faith. It's done by faith. Why? Because as the scripture says, it is through faith. That a righteous person has life. It is through faith that we are saved. It is through faith that we are redeemed. It is through faith that we are forgiven of our sins. It's through faith. That's why the Bible says without faith it's impossible. It ain't even possible. What? To please God without faith. Amen? You can't do it. You can't please God without faith. Faith, faith, just a little bit of faith. That's a song that we used to sing. You got to have faith, and the Bible lets us know that every man, woman, boy, and girl, every man has been dealt a what? A measure of faith. A measure. Now, what you do with your measure, that's going to be on you. So your measure could be big, or your measure could be little, bitty, teeny, tiny. But whatever you do with your measure, that's going to be between you and God. Hello. So today's message is, I won't be ashamed. And that's what Paul was saying. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Why? Because it's the power of God. The gospel is the power. So, amen, we got a lot of people preaching a lot of things, amen, but we got to get back to preaching the gospel. What does the gospel mean? Good news. We got to get back to preaching the good news. All right, what is the good news? Christ came, Christ died, Christ lived, Christ rose. And the best thing about it, Jesus saves. Jesus saves. The gospel message, the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ, it's all about him. It ain't about how big we want our church to be. It ain't about how many members we want. It ain't what kind of car we want to drive. It ain't what kind of house we want to live in or what kind of model jet we want to fly in. It's all about him. If you preach the gospel, amen, the gospel will be the thing that does the work in the lives of people. 
Because it is the power. The gospel is the power unto salvation. So Paul said, I'm not ashamed of this message that I've been given to declare unto the world. Hello, somebody. I'm not ashamed. So that's the message. I won't be ashamed of what? I won't be ashamed of the gospel. I won't be ashamed to tell people about this Savior that I know for myself. Try the man I know him. And man, a song. Try the man I know him. Found him to be a friend. Another song said, you can't make me doubt him. Why? Because I know too much about him. You can't make me doubt him in my heart. Oh, you're going to have some folks that come along and try and make you doubt what you believe. They're going to try and plant seeds of confusion in your life to try and make you backtrack and backpedal on what you have been convinced and what you have known and what you have learned. You're going to have some people that come and like, how can you believe that? Or it's going to happen. But we can't be ashamed to say, I know my Redeemer lives. He lives, he lives, he lives. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me a long life, narrow way. He lives. Jesus lives. He's alive and well. And that's the message right there by itself. Jesus is alive and well. Why? Because he's living on the inside of me. Paul said it like this. It's Christ who lives. It's no longer I that live, but it's Christ who lives in me. What are you trying to say? It's not about me. When I'm in him, it's all about him. It's all about accomplishing his purpose, accomplishing his will. Amen. He won't stop me from having a life. He won't stop me from living. Amen. But I can't exclude him while I'm living. Hello, somebody. If I'm living for him, then I, it's got to be about him. If I'm living as a result of him, then i got to make it about him. I can't exclude him and just make it about me. Mm. Let's look at Acts chapter 1. Because, again, when Jesus came on earth, there was already... Multiple, multiple prophecies for many years about this quote, quote, Messiah that they was expecting. They was expecting someone to come, you know, in great splendor and, and great arraignment. And they was expecting somebody to come, you know, as a conquering king. And they were expecting somebody to come as a, a, like a warlord. They were going to tear everything up and set everything in order. That's what they were expecting. Because that's the way the prophecy made it seem. But look at chapter uh, Acts chapter one verse six. So it says, so when the apostles were with Jesus, they kept asking him. They kept asking him and asking him, and said, Lord, has the time come for you to free Israel and restore our, our restore our kingdom? That's what the prophecies kept saying, you know. That someone is going to, like, almost like another Moses is going to come and liberate God's people. And at this time, they weren't even in bondage. Not physically, but mentally and spiritually, they were still in bondage. So it says, are you going to free Israel and restore the kingdom? And he replied, the Father alone has the authority to set those dates. Jesus made it clear. It ain't even about me knowing everything that there is to know. He said, the Father has the authority to set those dates and times, and they are not for you to know. Oh, okay. Enough said. Let me move on. If it ain't for me to know, then it ain't for me to know. So I can't dwell on it. I can't worry about it. I know it's going to happen, but Jesus said it's not for you to know. So sitting down, worrying about it, being stressed about it, you know, feeling like you know, you know, the, like the, uh, the 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 little story about the the chicken, you know, who was hit on the head. The sky is falling. The sky is falling. You know, you can't worry about you know everything that's going to take place ten years from now. Worry about today. Get through today. Get through today, and then get ready for tomorrow. 
but don't stress yourself out and lose your mind worrying about what's going to take place tomorrow because you got to get through today. Hello, somebody. Man, my Live in the now. That's what I hear. Live in the now. Live in the now. Make today the best day it could possibly be. Live in the now. Amen. Remember that. Remember that. Let's look on. Let's look on. It said, verse 7 said, he replied, the Father alone has authority to set the dates and times, and it is not for you to know. Remember that part. But you will receive. I love this part right here. Verse 8, he says, I promise to them, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. All right? So you're going to get power. Something's going to take place in your life. When you go do what I told you to do, and when you're where I need you to be at, you're going to get exactly what you need. What you need? You need power. Huh. The church needs power. The people of God need power. The Christians in today's society, they need power. They don't need to dress the part and sound the part and not live the part. They need power. We need power to get the job done. Hello, somebody. And along with that power comes authority. Mm. Along with power comes authority. So he said, he says to his disciples, I have given you authority to tread upon serpents. We've been given power and we've been given authority to operate in the earth. Just like Adam was given it, we've been given it. Adam screwed it up. Adam was put in charge. Adam should have smacked that serpent on the head with a stick. Tell him, shut up talking to me. Adam was the one in charge. But he let himself get convinced to try something new, to try something different. He was led astray. Look at this. <clears throat> now, you're going to receive power when the Holy Ghost comes. And what is that power going to let you do? The first thing it's going to do, and it says, and you will be my witnesses. Mm. So the power helps you to witness. Oh, okay, that's how it works. The power helps you to be an effective and informed and a powerful witness for the Lord. Why you don't never talk about it? Why you don't never share about it? Why? Because you're not operating in the power. Why are you afraid and timid and intimidated by other people? Because you're not operating in the power. Because the power is the thing that allows you to be an effective witness. Mm. So you don't just have boldness. You have Holy Ghost boldness. And you're not ashamed. I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed. Why? Because I got power to be a witness. And you shall be my witnesses telling the people about me everywhere. Everywhere. Telling the people about me everywhere. On Facebook, on LinkedIn, on Instagram, on Twitter, everywhere. In Jerusalem and throughout Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. While we got churches in Africa, while we got people in Pakistan, in the ends of the earth, we got to take this gospel message everywhere. Everywhere. If I could take it to an island, you know, in the Bahamas, or if I could take it to Jamaica, I'd take it to the, the ends of Jamaica, the coast of Costa Rica. It says, to the ends of the earth. You got to take this message everywhere. Why? Because Jesus can't do it. He can't come back. He can't, won't, and ain't going to. He can't come back to everybody. I don't care if they talk Swahili, I don't care if they I don't care if they talk in German, French, Russian, whatever language they talk in, they're gonna hear the message about this Jesus. Cause it says it must be preached to the four corners of the earth. Everybody, Lottie Dottie gonna hear about this Jesus. To the ends of the earth. Everywhere. Everywhere. The most remotest island on the planet. 
going to hear something about this man called Jesus. So the gospel must be preached. And we must not be ashamed to be what? A witness. I'm not ashamed to be a witness. Why? Because I have the power to get the job done. I'm walking in power and walking in authority to be a witness for the Lord that I serve. Because he is Lord and King. So Jesus himself said, he asked a profound question. He said, why call ye me Lord, Lord, and you won't do what I say? I said, all right, Jesus. He said, why are you calling me Lord? And you're not submitted to my authority. You're not listening to anything I tell you, but yet you're calling me Lord. Church folks. He was talking to church people. He wasn't talking to unbelievers. He was talking to church folks. You're calling me Lord, but you're living like you don't know me. Oh, Jesus. We got to do better, church. We got to do better. We got to do better. We got to do better. And our last scripture in Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. Question, comments before we move on. Luke chapter 9. Starting at verse 23. This is what the word of God says. Jesus speaking. And verse 23 says, in the New Living Translation, says it like this. Then he said to the crowd, he said to the crowd, everywhere he went, there was a crowd. If it wasn't a crowd, it became a crowd. Why? Because he was there. So he said to the crowd, if any one of you, any one of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way. Take up your cross daily. What you say? Take up your cross daily and follow me. Take up your cross daily and follow me. So one songwriter wrote a song that, that, that was worded like this. Asked the question, must Jesus bear the cross alone? And all the world go free. No, there's a cross for everyone, and there's a cross for me. Take up your cross and follow me. Your cross might not be the same as my cross, but everybody got a cross that they must bear. Mm -hmm. Take up your cross daily and follow me. If you try, Jesus said, if you try to hang on to your life, you will surely lose it. You will surely lose it. While you're trying to hang on to it, you're already losing it. Why? Because you haven't surrendered it to him. But if you give up your life for my sake, if you give up your life for my sake, he's not talking about dying a mortal death. He's not talking about dying a physical death. If you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. And what you and what do you benefit if you gain the whole world, but you yourself are lost and destroyed? Mm. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Another another scripture asks. Verse twenty six. If anyone is ashamed of me and my message, say that one more time. If anyone is ashamed of me and my message, again, today's message is what? I won't be ashamed. If you're ashamed of me and my message, not just me, but the message about me, oh, Lord, the Son of Man will be ashamed of that, that person when he returns in his glory and in the glory of the Father and the holy angels. So we can't be ashamed, because if we're ashamed of him, he's going to be ashamed of us. Mm. That's what he said. If anyone is ashamed of me and my message, the Son of Man would be ashamed of that person, that person, when he returns in his glory, and the glory of the Father, and the holy angels. Verse 27, I tell you the truth. <clears throat> Somebody said, tell the truth. I tell you the truth, 
Sir, I'm standing right here, right now, will not die before they see the kingdom of God. That's powerful. Powerful. They're going to see the kingdom of God established. They're going to see it. They're going to reap the benefit of it. They're going to see it with their own eyes. He wasn't talking about a physical kingdom like everybody was expecting him to establish, you know, this great big palace and a great big, you know, uh, uh, mansion and city, you know, where he rules and reigns. That's what they were expecting. But he wasn't talking about in the physical sense. He wasn't talking about in the natural sense. He had a, he came to do a work, and he came to establish the kingdom, what, in the hearts of man. It wasn't about a physical kingdom. It was about a spiritual kingdom in your life, in your heart, in your soul, establishing the connection with God so that you belong to him and he belongs to you. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth right now, here and today as it is in heaven. We need agreement, my God. We need the spirit of agreement to be operating in and through our lives. What are you agreeing with? I'm agreeing with what God is saying. I'm agreeing with what God is doing. So the songwriter said, Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without me. I want to be smack dab in the middle of whatever God is doing. I want to be involved, not trying to beg, plead, and drag God along to be involved in what I'm doing. I want to be involved in what God is doing. God, my God. So the song said, Lord, whatever, whatever, whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without me. My God, I want to be involved. Why? Because I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed, and I won't be ashamed. I won't be ashamed to say who I am and whose I am. If it costs my life, I'm still going to say it. You can't make me doubt him because I know too much about him. Threatening to take my life is fine. My life don't belong to me anymore. It belongs to him. Oh, Paul said it. My life is hid. Oh, that's a good message right there. My life is hid in Christ. So you think you can get to me? You think you can take my life? You think you can threaten me? Go ahead. Go ahead and try. I'm not walking in fear, and I'm not being intimidated by anybody. Because I got power and I got authority to operate in this earth while I'm still here. I got work to do. And you're not going to stop me from doing it because you're trying to scare me and you're trying to intimidate me. And it's saying, no, well, maybe I, maybe, I, maybe I don't believe what the Bible said. No, well, maybe all that ain't really right. You know, maybe I just need to compromise a little bit. No. I won't compromise even the slightest bit of what the word says. You got so many people, they're literally selling out. I can name their names. They are selling out. Why? Because they want to maintain the status quo. They want to maintain their prominence in society. But again, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? You sold out. And there's going to be a price to pay when you stand in judgment before the great throne. And he says, depart from me, I never knew you. But didn't I, 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 didn't I. And he's going to say, you sure did, but you didn't do none of it for me. It was all about you. You made it about you. And it was no longer about me. So you get no credit for anything that you've done. Anywhere you've been. Any people you help. Any lives you touch. You get no credit for it. Because you made it about yourself. You became selfish. Mm. Vain glory. God's against it. Vain glory. Pride. Arrogance. Haughtiness, a high-minded, my God, one of the things that God hates, a proud look. Well, what, what, what's wrong with looking proud? What's wrong with look, being proud of how you look? That's not what he's saying. I'm talking about a proud look, walking around being arrogant, haughty, and high-minded, feeling like you're better than everybody else, feeling like you have arrived, you have it all, you know it all, and you are it all. God said, no, that's what you think, but I'm going to prove you wrong. 
And when you fall flat on your face, guess what? Then maybe you'll look up and live. Because if you want to humble yourself, God has a very, 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 very prominent way of humbling you before him. But it's better when we do it ourselves. It's better when we humble ourselves so God won't have to do it. Amen? I won't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed to tell people about this Jesus. Don't be ashamed, you know, to let people know, you know, that God is, you know, operating and moving in the earth today. The same God that was talked about in the Bible is alive and well. and He's moving in the people, in the lives of people today. Now he is not walking on the planet. Jesus Christ is not walking on two fours, you know, going from city to city, from state to state, you know, touching people. He's not operating in that physical sense anymore, but he's still moving. He's still touching. He's still speaking. He's doing it in us and through us. So the other song said, Lord, I'm available to you. Use my hands. Use my feet. Use my mouth. Speak through me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Let me be your instrument. Let me be the vessel that you work in, operate in, pour out through. My God. And remember the story in Jeremiah, my favorite, favorite story. As we get ready to close, Jeremiah talked about the potter's house, and God showed him what he needed to see. Because sometime along the way, things do go wrong. And it said that the clay marred in the hand of the potter when he was trying to shape it and mold it, and he had it on the wheel spinning around, and he was pressing on it, and things began to fall apart. In the middle of the process, things began to fall apart, but God didn't change his mind. The potter didn't take the clay and throw it out the window. He didn't chuck it, but he said, I'm going to make it another vessel. Mm. So at first, it might have it been supposed to be a vase, but he said, well, I can't make it a vase because it started falling apart, so I'll make it into a flower pot. Or I make it into a bowl, or I make it into a whatever. But God still said it's, the clay still has purpose, even though it's, even though it fell apart in the middle of the process, it still has a purpose. So let God do the making, let God do the molding, let God shape and form you into who you need to be to fulfill his purpose, and to fulfill his will for your life. And don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed to tell people who you are, who you serve, who you love. Some say, I love God. I love God. Don't you love God? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? You don't love God? What's wrong with you? Because you, if you don't love him, it's because you haven't tried him. It's because you haven't allowed him to prove himself to you. Or otherwise, you would love him. You would honor him. You would reverence him. Because you know who he is. And you know what he's able to do in you, through you, and for you. Amen? Don't be ashamed. I won't be ashamed. Because he said, if you're ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you. Before my Father, which is in heaven. We don't want God to be ashamed of us. Amen. So how do I do it? How do I do it? How do I operate in this boldness? How do I operate in this power and in this authority that I've been given? It's simple. You use the word. Use the word. Apply the word. Work the word. Use it. Use it for your benefit. Use it to help enhance your life on a daily basis. Thy word, David said, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. Unfortunately, it was after the fact, but still he said it. 
you know. Now, this is something that we have to recognize and realize. God don't, he don't, I keep saying this, God will not stick with something that he sees is not working. He's smarter than that. He's wiser than that. So God said, that wasn't working before. So now I'm going to do something different. The new covenant, the new covenant says I'm not going to just give them my word, but I'm going to write my word on the tables of their heart. I'm going to write it on the tables of their heart. They're going to get it down on the inside. They're not just going to wait till they hear it being read at the temple. They're not going to just wait for the priest to come and, and give them a quick message. But they're going to get the word down on the inside of them. And it's going to make a difference in their life. Things have shifted. Things have changed. God is doing things in a whole new way. Because this is going to be more effective when they have it down on the inside. So the song said, I don't know all these songs just keep coming. Something on the inside. Something on the inside. What is it doing? Working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. When you allow what's on the inside of you to start working on the outside, your life is going to change. The power of God working in you and working through you will cause your life on the outside to change. You ain't got to tell people how to dress. You ain't got to tell people how to clean up their behavior, clean up their attitude, change their nasty demeanor. All you got to do is allow the word of God to work on their life. And it'll begin to change them from the inside out. Let the word do the work. Amen. Don't feel like you got to change people because you can't change nobody, not even yourself. You got to allow the word to do the work and allow the power of God to operate in your life. And change will take place. Amen. Closing questions, comments. We're about to wrap it up and get ready to close with communion. Any questions or comments as we get ready to close? All hearts and minds are clear. We're going to close in prayer.